Welcome back to the Chem OG. Today we're going to take a look at reaction kinetics. And kinetics have to do with the speed of a reaction. In other words, how fast we can make it happen. And many times to take a look at the speed of a reaction, we need to break it down into several different steps in order to understand which step is faster, which one is slower, what role each molecule plays in the speed of the reaction overall. And so today we're going to be looking to define some key terms. And those key terms are a catalyst. We're going to take a look at what an intermediate functions as in the reaction. We're going to take a look at what inhibitors do. And we're also going to take a look at how it is that we coin something as a reactant or a product in a particular reaction. And so this is the answer to the question of what role does a molecule play? And it's important to understand the role of molecules because adding them or subtracting them from a process is going to lead to different consequences. And so the first thing we're going to take a look at is a catalyst. Now, the first thing you got to know about it in terms of a catalyst is that a catalyst does not appear in the overall reaction. So that means that if we take a look at the reaction overall, it's neither a reactant nor is it a product in the overall reaction. And so when we calculate thermodynamic quantities like delta G or delta H or delta S, what we're concerned with is what is the products minus the reactants. And so because a catalyst is neither a reactant nor is it a product in the overall reaction, it's it's not going to affect the overall thermodynamics of a reaction. And so the purpose of a catalyst is to decrease the energy barrier. So a lot of times we refer to that as the activation energy. And the whole, the whole intent is to make the reaction faster. So, you know, you could take a look at a, a DIY video in terms of how to change the oil in your car, but certainly it's much, much faster to get a mechanic to do it, right? You roll up to the shop and then he or she is going to change the oil for you. And it's much quicker than you trying to stumble and find things on your own. Now, could you, you know, learn those things on your own? Absolutely you can, but it would just take a longer time. Very similarly, you know, if you're in town and you're trying to get from place to place, maybe you'll hop into a taxi because a taxi can get you there faster. Right. So you could walk there. You could, uh, you know, hop in a car in a, in a new part of town and, and try to get from place to place. But if you don't know the lay of the land, certainly somebody who already does can get you there faster. So what a catalyst does is it doesn't change your course. It doesn't change where you start and where you end. Rather, it just gets you there in a faster time frame. And so when you take a look at a series of reactions that make up an overall reaction, the best way to spot a catalyst is that a catalyst first appears as a reactant. It goes in and then it gets reproduced as a product. So it comes back out. And that's the reason that it doesn't appear in the overall reaction. In one of the steps, it's on the reactant side. In a later step, it's on the product side. And those two things are going to cancel out. So that's how we define a catalyst. Now, if we take a look at an intermediate, an intermediate is a little bit different. And that's because even though it doesn't appear in the overall reaction either, the intermediate actually gets produced somewhere along the line. So it first appears as a product in one step, and then it gets consumed again as a reactant. So it, very much like a catalyst, because it appears on both sides of the reaction arrow at some point, and those two instances cancel out, you know, an intermediate doesn't appear in the overall reaction, but the order of appearance matters. So it first pops up as a product and then it disappears as a reactant. So that's a great visual way in order to be able to determine what an intermediate is. Now, if the intermediate that you form is unstable, usually that's going to be the slow step in your reaction. Okay, so where intermediates really uh, are going to play a part, an active role in the speed of a reaction is when they get formed in the slow step. So if we have an unstable intermediate, that's going to be the slow step in our reaction. So how does that compare with an inhibitor? Well, everything that we said about a catalyst is pretty much true, except that the effect is the opposite. So instead of a catalyst making your reaction faster, an inhibitor is actually going to make your reaction slower. So inhibitors also don't appear in the overall reaction. And instead of decreasing the activation energy, they increase the activation energy. And that is going to make your reaction a lot slower. Now, as you delve into the biochemistry of it all, inhibitors come in all sorts of different flavors, right? Uh, competitive, non-competitive, and so on. But the idea behind inhibitors is that they all work you know, in the same way kinetically, and that is to increase the activation energy makes the reaction slower. So inhibitors are also going to go in and they're going to pop back out. 
So they don't appear in the overall reaction like we said, but they're first going to come in as reactants and then they're going to get reproduced as products. So in order for you to be able to distinguish an inhibitor from a catalyst, because their order of appearance and where it is that they show up is going to be pretty much the same, what you have to take a look at is what effect does adding that molecule have? If it's going to make your reaction faster, then it's a, a, a catalyst. If it makes your reaction slower, then it's going to be an inhibitor instead. So now let's take a look at an example problem. So if we take a look at this particular example, we have two reactions that are happening um, one after the other in this fashion. And so what I want to do is I want to figure out what the overall reaction is. And so if I take a look at nitric oxide, NO, I see it as a reactant in the first step, but it gets regenerated as a product in the second step. So when I add up both of these reactions, my NOs are going to disappear. And if I take a look at NO2, there's an NO2 as a product on the in the first reaction, but it's also a reactant in the second reaction. So both of those NO2s are going to disappear as well. So if I take a look at the overall reaction, my overall reaction is going to be just the ozone plus the oxygen radical generating two molecules of oxygen. Now, because neither the NO nor the NO2 popped up in the overall reaction, that means that they're going to play one of the roles of which we spoke a little bit earlier. And so if I take a look at NO2, NO2 first appears on the product side, and then it gets consumed on the reactant side. So if you remember, if it first appears as a product and then is consumed as a reactant, that makes it an intermediate. And if I take a look at nitric oxide, NO, well, NO goes in as a reactant, and then it gets regenerated as a product, and that is characteristic of a catalyst. So it first appears as a reactant, and then it's reproduced as a product. And so O3 and O, those are just the reactants of this reaction. And O2 is on the product side, or on the right-hand side of the reaction arrow, so it's a product of this particular reaction. So because intermediates and catalysts don't appear in the overall reaction, those are ones you can categorize uh, by knowing that they don't appear in the overall reaction. And then when you do have your overall reaction, just take a look at your reactant side and your product side, and then you can figure out you know, if it's on the left side, then what you have is a reactant, and if it's on the right side, then what you have is a product. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please support this channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. And certainly if there's a playlist or a video that you would like to see, please click on that as well.